Okay, I'm shooting this video in my office at work, so you get to see how untidy my office is and how uh, disorganized my bookshelves are. But what I want to talk about in this video is some material I've been reading and thinking about in relation to uh, movement and thinking. And I'm specifically referring here to some work by Rodolfo Linas in Eye of the Vortex, a really nice book, <coughs> excuse me, and Pat Churchland's work uh, from the 1980s really on uh, neurophilosophy and the book Neurophilosophy specifically. Uh, what I'll be talking about here is something that I tried to uh, to find my way through in an earlier video that I made on the other channel, Conference Report. So what I'll do is I'll put a link to that video at the bottom of uh, this blog posting and on the info box on this video just in case you want to toggle across to see what I've got wrong really I suppose. Uh, so as I say, I, I, I kind of used that that other video on conference report as a kind of uh, opportunity to rehearse some of the ideas. And so in this video, I'll be uh, reading out how I've processed that and what kinds of what uh, yeah what kind of ducks I've managed to put into a row from that video. So yeah, it's it, it's written in a different kind of language and different kinds of. Um, examples are used I think as well so yeah it's just an experiment for myself I suppose it starts off like this living organisms move some of them jump and run others fly or slither some crawl or burrow whilst some swim or hop some walk on two legs others canter on four dogs and cats and horses and fish and other obviously moving beings are the stars of this ambulatory show. And in the slow motion world of geological and ecological time, their get up and go attracts a lot of attention. But movement is not restricted to creatures with legs or wings, and even the most sessile and sedentary life forms, which seem to spend their entire life passing, passively waiting, do so in relation to an active and changing environment. Sunflowers turn their heads in lockstep with the motion of the nearest star. Pond algae floats to the surface where oxygen and light can be found. Dandelion seeds drift in the wind. Trees send out roots into the earth and moss grows by inches along the north side of those trees. Excuse me. <coughs> movement, the movement that I've just indicated for example, movement brings change. Some spots are warmer than others. Some are more plentiful in resources. Some are safer. And movement towards these spots brings a positive change in the likely survival of the organism making these moves. Change of fortune through the change in location brought by movement may also be negative, however. An organism blindly on the move may find itself in the waiting jaws of a predator or in an area of toxicity, or stranded far from its kin. Therefore, those rolling, tumbling, floating, drifting organisms, which are able to somehow take control of this motion, are more likely to survive and prosper than those which stumble randomly and fatalistically between famine and plenty, between predator and prey. Incessant movement is part of the environmental conditions in which organisms operate and offers a set of possibilities for evolutionary development. Strategies for taking advantage of this ambient movement vary across the animal and vegetable kingdom. Some organisms have settled for simple one-stop solutions, such as phototropism, the facility of plants to grow towards the light, Others have used slightly more complex mechanochemical processes, such as the amoeba, which has a cell wall that's sensitive to the presence of chemicals in the water around it that signal the proximity of a nutrient source, usually a smaller organism. This sensitivity in the amoeba is realized by the chemical composition of its cell wall changing, such that it becomes less rigid and bulges in the direction of the food source. Eventually, the amoeba, the bulge, makes contact, surrounding and absorbing it. 
The strategy for exploiting locomotion, which is of most interest and relevance to us, I suppose I should say to me, however, is the one preferred by those organisms which we regard as truly mobile and which we might feel we have most in common with, at least the ex to the extent that we vegetarians try not to eat them. These are creatures which have avoided putting all of their evolutionary eggs in one basket and have gone for the building of a central nervous system. The core principle of a central nervous system is that it connects for faculties for collecting data from the outside world, call them sensors, with mechanisms for movement and action in relation to that data. So, for example, a simple organism may have sensors which can detect the presence of food at a particular place in its local environment, and it may also have some means of moving through that environment, a flagellum, for example. A central nervous system connecting these faculties together coordinates the sense input with the motor output into an integrated sensory motor system that allows the organism to move in the direction of the food source. A creature with a slightly more complex central nervous system may also have additional features that these simpler organisms do not, as well as being able to move and to respond to movement in a way which coordinates action with environment. This more complex central nervous system may, for example, be able to evaluate the changing environment and make predictions based on this perceived differences in those values. This structure of evaluation and something like perception effectively represents salient parts of the environment as processes within the central nervous system. This is broadly the view put forward by Pat Churchland in her book Neurophilosophy, in which she points out that this ability to coordinate representing the world with movement in the world is not only tactically useful, but is also an eminently scalable solution to the problems of survival. As she puts it, with increased complexity of behavioural repertoire comes increased capacity for representing the environment. So as the variety and the multiplicity of sensory motor activity increases, so the ability of the organism to not only exist within the world, but also to model parts of that world within itself, also increases. Churchland goes on to link this ability to coordinate sense and movement within a sensory motor system with the development of brains and something like intelligence or thought. She claims that if you root yourself to the ground, you can afford to be stupid. But if you move, you must have mechanisms for moving and mechanisms to ensure that the movement is not utterly arbitrary and independent of what's going on outside. Neurons, she says, are evolution's solution to the problem of adaptive movement. This is also the view put forward by Rodolfo Linas in Eye of the Vortex, a theory which he further develops into a possible account of the development of the self. Now I'm not actually going to go there right now, but uh, a little bit further down the line I think I will have to address questions of the self, but certainly that's a, a line that Rodolfo Linas develops very effectively. But when he's talking about um, movement and the development of a central nervous system and, and brains and thought, he sums up this theory in the memorable and apposite aphorism, that which we call thinking is the evolutionary internalization of movement. I'm going to say that again because I think it's so good. That which we call thinking is the evolutionary internalization of movement. Okay, that's where I want to leave it today. Uh, there's a lot to be said about this last bit, is this uh, Linas quotation, and I want to take off in a, in a slightly different direction from that, because uh, I think I've talked enough about evolution and, and, and deep background. I want to move into, into a slightly different area for a while. But I'm going to pick up from that aphorism, uh, or a shortened version of it, that thinking is internalised movement, and see where I can go with that. Okay, thanks very much indeed for watching.